Seasoned Chef Troy Vincent here. Today we're gonna do a version, my version of homemade minestrone. Um, here we have about two pounds of uh, beef chunks, which you would normally get for stew or whatever. You can cut them up smaller. I like to make them like less than a half inch. We have about a half of a large onion diced, roughly chopped or whatever you wanna do with them. Um, a quarter cup of tomato paste, a stick of butter, about three quarters to a, uh, to a cup of flour. I have minced, some minced garlic, which you can mince yourself if you want to cheat. I have a can of mixed vegetables, which I'm not showing their label, so, and a can of kidney beans. Now, on the beans, you can use Great Northern. It really doesn't matter, uh, but in minestrone, you want to always have some kind of beans. Um, Technically, the Italian, I think, version I always use cannellini, so it's, that's on you. A can of diced tomatoes, and I have some beef broth here. Now, you can use chicken. I use beef, but I use a strong, it's a stronger beef uh, broth that I use. And um, you can enhance it a little bit, you, you know, add uh, like beef bouillon or some um, au jus type. You see, you can see mine's pretty pretty strong it's not just like some weak beef broth um, and then for pasta you can add pasta or rice um, I have elbow in there but this time I'm using some stars I have some little pasta stars so I don't want a lot of pasta in mine um, I've been trying to avoid the carbs as much lately so um, let me get my camera set up and you can see my stock pot sitting here I always start off my uh, soups with a roux, which is what the flour was for. Um, so I start off with a whole stick of butter and melt that in the pan. And then I start adding flour, um, about four cloves of garlic, and then the onions. And then I'll put, um, actually I'll put the butter, the onions, and the garlic, and then I add the flour. Butter's almost melted and I'm gonna go ahead and add put the minced onion in with the or garlic in with the minced onion. So I'll go ahead and start that. Cut out all the little boring details, you know. I'll let this uh, start to uh, brown the onions a little. I've got it turned up on about medium. Now some people uh, tend to use uh, tomato sauce or and tomatoes or one or the other I like to have the reason I use paste or uh, you can actually use puree instead and skip the sauce and, or, and the paste and just add puree um, but I like it to have a sweeter kind of a taste so one reason why I've always preferred to use a tomato paste in some recipes and then you can even, you know, dilute it out with a little water or something if you don't like to be thick, um, because it is very thick uh, paste, of course you know that. But I'll let these brown and I'll be right back. Now one thing I also like to do is add a little salt and pepper, but you got to be careful with this salt again because you're going to be getting salt. Not only if you use salted butter, you're going to get some in the salted butter. Um, but you're going to get some out of the broth as well, if you, especially mine, because it's a very uh, rich broth. It has quite a bit of salt in it, so I don't really need to over salt. And salt is, again, one of those things, if you add too much, it's hard to recover from that. So it's better to add not enough and then add some later in your bowl or whatever so you're not over salting it. One other thing is now some people like to make like a mirepoix, which is the uh, aromatics, your onion, carrots, and celery. I've gotten used to not using celery over the years because my wife didn't eat it. Of course, she's deceased now, but um, I have carrots in my, in my vegetable mix and also celery, so I'm not going to worry about adding celery or carrots as when I got some in here. And um, I always might, I might t add a pinch of celery salt later also if, I, if, it, if it tastes like it doesn't have a, a good celery taste to it. Um, but again, that's that's all on you. Uh, anytime I make my soups, you, you, you 
you don't have to follow my recipe exactly. I don't, you know, that's that's a good thing about casseroles and soups is you can always um, play around a little bit. You can add a little something else. You know, as long as you stay within a certain within reason, you you can probably pretty much add anything you want to a soup or or a casserole. You know. Um, anyway, these are about brown enough, so. What we'll do now is we'll add the flour and I'll add a little of time to make sure we get the right consistency I'm looking for because I don't want to over thicken it. And I think this whole stick of butter is probably going to take about a cup so I'm probably going to take everything I have here because I think I had in between 33 quarters and a, and a cup. All right. We're, we're good. So I'm going to add all of that. Um, and if you put a little too much, the good thing about roux is you can always add a little more butter back into it if you want to. Um, if it, you decide that it's, oh, well, this is too thick. Well, this is pretty thick here. As a matter of fact, I might add another pinch of butter. Just to thin it out a little bit more because it's a little thicker than I like there we go because you want it to kind of spread out once you uh, get the butter and the, and the flour in see how it starts to spread out that's good that's a perfect now if I was making a bechamel I would start adding cream at this point so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of our broth not gonna add it all actually you know what I'm gonna I'm not even gonna do that I'm gonna put the beef in because some of the juice will cook out of the beef I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here actually I do better I should have been put I should have put the meat in with the onions you know? my brain isn't exactly the day I'm gonna put it in with the onions before I added the flour. And then you're gonna get the fat off the off the beef too. Whatever fat and juice cooks it off the beef will have been mixed in with the flour. So I'll be right back when this I'm gonna let this sit and brown a little bit. Okay, that was a big boo-boo. You don't usually you always usually brown the beef with the onions, but I'm going to prove to you that you can make mistakes in the kitchen and recover from them. Um, so sometimes it happens, but try not to, you know, <laughs> that's the point. Um, I went ahead and uh, added a little tiny bit of the broth. I put some more cracked black pepper, fresh ground pepper here in here with the beef. And I had to add a little of the sauce to deglaze all the flour that was burning down to the bottom of the pan to keep it from sticking too much. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this broth at a time because you don't want to. What happens when you mix uh, like roux with a with a gravy or, or with water? It will make clumps. So you really want to kind of add a little at a time. So you get sort of a, a gravy, you see that? Now, I probably added too much flour in this recipe, but I usually basically start most recipes about the same way. Plus we're gonna have the juices from the tomatoes. Um, now I'm gonna sit here and deglaze the bottom of this pan. Put this one in here. Nice color, caramel color. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add, start adding the soups. Soup. Like anything, soups are diced tomatoes. Soups are easy. 
Tips are easy once you know how to do them and once you know how to make them. They're not hard. Now kidney beans, and I'll say this, I've said it in many videos. I always, always rinse the beans. Because I don't like the, the, the sauce that forms around beans in the, in the can. It's almost like too icky. So dark red. You can use light red or dark red. Get all these beans out of here. Okay. Alright. Stir that in. You'll see it lighten up quite a bit once I put the vegetables in. Here's the tomato paste. And the rest of that broth, which I had about a quart and a half or two quarts of broth as well there. And I didn't say how much I had, but I used the last time, so. I've been on my phone a lot today, so my brain wasn't working. I haven't lost a lot going on. So, as I told y'all in the last videos, I'm trying to move. So I'm in a lot of, in a lot of my, let's just say my pokers are in a lot of different fires. That's the problem. Too many pokers in the fire, they say. So, I'm gonna keep the juice. Because I want to thin. Now, look at that. Carrots, celery. It's even got corn. Now, some people don't like corn in their in their uh, minestrone. It's up, it's up to you, really. And as I said, you can you can play with recipes a little bit within reason. You don't want to change too much stuff. And I'm gonna add the rest of this broth and the reason see that it's like perfect right. last thing I'm gonna add is about about maybe half of the, I don't have but about a half a container of stars here a pasta star so I'm gonna add about half of them and that's gonna suck up some of that moisture as well so it's gonna be thicker once it's done And then this is just has to cook for a while. So again, soups are always easy. Casseroles are easy. If you have the ingredients, if you have the stuff, you don't have to change much. If you don't want to, you can change anything you want to. You can use, you know, your own vegetables, carrots, uh, potatoes, celery, and leave the corn out. Or, you know, if you don't like carrots, you can leave the carrots out. It's a, that's all on you. But let's, we're going to let this steam, stew for a while and then we'll come back. Alrighty. It's been about 40 minutes. I've let it cook. If you look here, you can see the stars are swollen up all the way. It's had time for the beef to simmer, soften up the beef a little. I tend to like my beef a little uh, in my soups, at least a little, you know, easy to... You're not crunching on it. I mean, you know, so it's a little, little tender, you know. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get a spoon here. Do a little taste test. See if you look, there's carrots or celery right there. Potatoes, uh, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, and beef, and little stars. Let's try it. Mm. 
Mm. That is really super good. I tell you what, that's better than the last time I made it, so that, I think it needs just a dash more salt, but see, just like I said, I didn't know where salt at the beginning, you can always add a little bit more at the end, so there it is, my homemade minestrone, little star pastas, really good stuff.